Today we're going to be focusing on how to unlock Borealis, which is the Zombies Mastery Camo for MW3. Overall, there's 20 different challenges that you're going to have to understand how to do. Most are pretty straightforward, but some you're going to need to know a little bit about the mode to make your grind that much easier. Before we get too deep into the challenges, I'm going to give you some recommendations to get you started off on the right foot, as well as explain some of the things that the game doesn't really do a very good job of. For starters, the Zombies match is essentially broken up into two parts. You have the first infill part where you go there's 45 minute timer and then the blue area or purple area on the map starts to expand and that'll go ahead and take over the entire map and that takes approximately 15 minutes when you spawn in there's going to be multiple x fill locations they are different every time but it's kind of the same different locations they're kind of fixed locations but you don't get access to all of them every single match so you kind of have to look at where that is when you spawn in and then kind of see where that little purple area that's going to expand and that'll give you kind of an idea of how much time you have before you can go ahead and use that x fail before it's gone top of that after that 45 minutes is elapsed you get a new 15 minute timer and that's how long it's going to take for that blue area or purple area to expand and cover the entire map at the end of that time, close to the last two minutes, there will be a brand new X fill. This will be called the final X fill. I've actually never taken that one. I've never spent that long in a match to do my camo challenges or any other challenges, but there will be a last one and you'll get on that and that'll go ahead and leave right at the last second. So it gives everyone an opportunity to get there. There will be 24 total players on the map, but since there's no PVP, essentially, for lack of a better phrase, they will be friendlies. One of the important parts in getting started is I would recommend doing some of the story missions, uh, primarily because there's tons of rewards that can be had from these, different items that you could put into your inventory, uh, but also as you complete these and you're doing contracts regularly, you're gonna be able to level up your gun, you're gonna be able to do specific challenges, you're gonna get a little bit more comfortable with the mode, but you're also gonna get access to all of these schematics. One thing it doesn't really tell you is how to get all these schematics, but I have pretty much every schematic except for maybe one or two that maybe I need. I'm missing scatter blast. I know it's in zone two. You can kind of see the list of where you can get the specific item. Obviously, certain ones are going to be more important than others. If you need rain rot for a specific challenge, then you're going to make sure you have that or you're going to have to loot it. Either way, it being on a cooldown and allows you to get access to it is even more important, especially if you're a little bit more casual and you're not going to be no life in this game. Pretty much every time you log on, if you have all your schematics, you'll be able to build whatever you want. And that includes perks, different upgrades on the Ethereum. So you can start with the Pack-A-Punch 2 daily. You can do every eight hours, you can get a Pack-A-Punch 1 crystal, which can definitely help to speed up the grind if you're only gonna log on a couple hours a day. For loadout, I think one of the most important parts is having a decoy grenade as a tactical. Even if you can find a monkey bomb, I know there were glitches that you could use monkey bombs and those types of things, but the thing with the decoy grenade that makes it so good is you can stack up to three in your inventory, and you can stack up more if you want inside your actual bag, but on top of that, when you go to the munitions to resupply your ammo, it also resupplies your decoy grenade. It doesn't work the same for the monkey bomb. Lethals, I like the throwing knife just because if you get caught in a reload, you're running two guns that kind of have a slow animation. You want to get away. Dogs will be very fast. You can turn around, knife the dog, and keep running. Build yourself a little bit of space. If you want even more space, if you're only running one weapon, you can switch to your hands and you'll get a little bit extra mobility on top of maybe having stamina. Ether Shroud's pretty good. I think that one can get you out of a sticky situation. You just have to use it when you're about to get into trouble. Uh, and then friends guard is pretty good too especially if you want all the zombies to aggro you but this will replace your armor so it's pretty good if you have a bad time picking up plates you could just pop this every time you really want to just restock and you can save those plates for when you actually need them uh energy mine is super powerful you throw it down it does a lot of damage and those are probably the main three that i would use if you're playing in a party healing aura is great if somebody goes down all the time as soon as they go down you pop this, it auto stands them up. You don't have to actually go over there and revive them. Next tip is specifically for solo players, but it works if you're in a party as well. When you do play as a solo player, the game will just feed you a bunch of self revives. It's okay if you already have one, you could go ahead and put more inside your inventory. If you somehow get down because you were playing extra aggressive, you were under leveled, whatever the case is, once you go ahead and revive yourself, it'll take it from your rucksack and then automatically equip it. So if you had like seven of them in your inventory, you could just literally get down over over and over and over and get out of that bad situation. So I think that's really good to have just on deck in case something bad happens that you're kind of cover your butt that way. And like I said, most of the challenges 
are pretty straightforward, but uh, the game doesn't necessarily say it. I mean, a lot of times things can be common sense, but when it comes to the different ammo mods, if it says toxic, that you should be using brain rot. If it says freezing, then cryo freeze. The electrifying dead wire fire the napalm burst and then scatter blast isn't really used for any of the challenges they are used for some missions but none of the challenges and if for some reason like you just can't find those or you're struggling because you don't have the schematic elemental pop will work uh, but there's a little bit of caveat to this it will be a little bit rarer so you're not going to be able to get it quite as often to proc it is random among the different ones so it will not always do the one you want so it could be helpful in that scenario if you kind of need to get something but you just want to do it you can do it that way. Uh, another part with elemental pop, at least when I did my challenges, some to be aware of is brain rot. If it gets one of the elites, which we're going to talk about, it, it did not count for me. It would turn them and some pop up and saying, Ooh, you turn them and they didn't get a chance to damage you or whatever, but it didn't actually track as part of the challenge for the mimics, the disciples or the manglers. So unless that's fixed and that was patched, I would 100% avoid that until you're 100% sure it will track. So I'd avoid that and brain rot if you're specifically going for any of the elite challenges. If you don't have the schematic, one of the great parts about the game is there are certain areas that are going to be highly probable to get exactly what you need. A lot of the weapon mods, even pack a punch and certain tools that you'll need uh, for the upgrades, you will be able to get these in infested strongholds or ether nests. Ether nests are a little bit safer. There's no big mobs that spawn, but you got to be a little bit careful. And when, if you're going to be going for these to farm, I would highly, highly recommend death perception. So you can see through the walls, you can shoot the little things that you need to, as you go through them. And then also PhD flopper. Uh, it's not mentioned in its description, but it's essentially an infinite gas mask It's way better than having a durable. Cause it's never going to break. When you go into these, it does hit you with the gas. If you had a gas mess up, it slowly ticks PhD flopper doesn't do that. Basically, you're not going to take any damage. You take your time, be a little bit more cautious, pop a couple, exit, kill those little wave of zombies that spawn, go in, do it again until you've cleared it. And then you can open the little various chests that are locked behind that. And that could give you a high probability of getting them. But again, with randomness and RNG, it may take you one or two, or you can get five of them in one. So it really depends on how that's going to work, but you'll get more comfortable with those as well. And if you do plan to go for some of those mods in some of these, if you go to an infected stronghold in tier one, it'll have you a guaranteed mimic spawn in tier two. You're going to get two guaranteed mimic spawns. So if you need to kill five, 10 mimics, you'll be able to farm these pretty quickly. And if you're only going there for the mimics, what you can do is kind of just run around without shooting the things, not as many as zombies will spawn you can go ahead and kind of walk around sometimes the mimics or just walking around if you shoot your gun they'll just head towards you and in other instances they might be hiding as an item it could be a self-revive it could be a chest it could be a box you walk by it does a little bit of a shake they pop out hopefully that doesn't scare you and then you go ahead and take them out and that'll count as your mimic elite and special kills uh if you depending on which part of the challenge you are because the last one you need 10 elites or specials and some of them you specifically need mimics. Kills with rare and higher just means that the gun needs to be blue or purple or even gold. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. The straightforward way is to have the specific wrench. Like I said, if you complete some of the different acts and missions, you'll have a few of those to save specifically for this. Uh, on top of that, when you get the schematic, you'll be able to craft those every so often. And then when you're in the tier two and tier three zone, they're going to be much more common. If you're in tier one, you'll mainly get the green one which is still cool to use way better than gray 50% improvement to damage, which I'll talk a little bit more about damage in a little bit, but that is kind of how you're going to have that. The gun needs to have blue outline, essentially covering where the gun is or, or purple or gold, not gray, not green. Those will not count as the 250 rare or higher. So with that being said, almost all the challenges can actually be done in tier one. Tier one is super efficient, low level, comfortable, a lot less likely to die can be a little bit slower in some instances because if you're in tier two, there's can be higher volumes of zombies and higher volumes of elites. But for the vast majority of your challenges, you can just stay kind of in the low threat tier one zone for nearly all the challenges. Uh, the only exceptions to this are the 10 disciples. You pretty much have to be in tier two or three, um, the high medium threat zones. And that's kind of it. Everything else can be done in the lower zones, which makes the challenges 
pretty easy. I think the camo grind in general is way easier than multiplayer. And it's also more straightforward because you know exactly what you need to do. And the only thing getting in your way essentially is you being able to find what you need. <laughs> so that kind of works out. Dogs you can pretty much find in the wild and almost on any contract, except for the mercenary contracts and the bounty ones. Typically when you grab a bounty, you just go to the directly the area uh, and you'll find a mimic, a mangler in tier one. And then in tier two, they can be mimics, manglers or disciples. And they actually do count towards your count. Initially they didn't, but now they actually do. I tested a couple guns today to find out if they did track and they 100% track. You kill a, you get a mimic as a bounty, you get it. You can also cancel the bounty if for some reason you don't want it. You can open up your map and there's an option to cancel on the top right. It's triangle for PlayStation controller. Uh, and you can just cancel it if it was the wrong one. If you can grab the next one and do it again. And, and, and contracts keep populating on the map. So if you don't like certain ones in the area, you can just grab them, cancel them, and then it'll spawn a, another set of them. If you're looking just to farm the zombie kills, Outlast is pretty good. That's the one that looks like a little bit of a satellite dish. You have the spore control, which is looks like a little egg and the eggs you got to break. Uh, and typically you can farm these by just taking your time, not finishing them. If you need to destroy six of the little spores, or control things just destroy five leave one uh, and and if you're looking to double up on essence you can just wait until you get a 2x and then clear the last one it'll actually do give you 2x on the essence for completing the contract as well so if it was 2k you'll get 4k not necessarily the rewards you get at the end but the essence rewards which could be pretty helpful especially if you need a pack a punch you're basically almost there with needing to pack a punch with a 5k 10 for tier two and then tier three to do triple pack. So yeah, you'll just be able to farm those specific contracts. Even raid weapon stash is pretty good. Uh, in tier one, you could just get farm zombies up to 250. Usually it take about seven to 10 minutes to get about the number of zombies you need, which doesn't take all that long. One of my favorite contracts to do just because it gives you an organic feel of the mode is to do the escort contracts in tier one. Uh, I think those are probably the most straightforward for the vast majority of challenges because you get about 125 zombies you get multiple 10 15 different dogs and then on top of that you can get three to six manglers so these are like the perfect tier one escorts are great for all of those things and typically if you do it two to three times you could pretty much knock out all of those various challenges with the exception of mimics and disciples pretty much straightforward just do a couple escorts and you're good and then you get the rewards right at the end uh, that's enough to pack a punch go to tier two and then if you need disciples or, or mimics you can kind of go that route as well if you're a little bit of a, a medium to high skilled player and you're more comfortable with tier two tier two can be effective at pretty much all the things that i mentioned with those specific contracts but in addition to spawning never-ending waves of zombies you can also get manglers on the raid weapon stash quite a bit of those and you can also get disciples on the escorts in addition to the mangler so you can kind of get a combination of both if you want a dedicated area to do that the outlast ones are great for disciples in tier two and manglers they kind of just infinitely spawn uh it's just there's a lot less of those in tier two and you got to be a little more comfortable what you're doing activate it raise the percent leave the area let the percent lower and you'll just continue to spawn both zombies and the different elites, which are stronger since they are in tier two. If you feel like the tier two contracts are a little bit above your skill level as a solo player, and maybe you're struggling to find those disciples, there's actually a map that I put together. I kind of mirrored the map that somebody on Twitter named Joey put out. I had already gotten all my disciples by this time. I had ran into these specific areas. I just hadn't made a map, but somebody put it out. I decided to kind of mirror it. So you kind of have an idea. You can just drive through these specific areas highlighted in red, and there's a high probability probability that you're going to get one to two disciples in each of these areas since other people will probably be doing the same they might not always be there but you can kind of get a, a good chance to get them if you're like hey we just happen to be in this area and over time you'll kind of memorize where these hot areas are because the disciples will be pretty much in the exact same location there's other spots for manglers as well i didn't really necessarily need a map because escorts and and are, are so plentiful with them the raid weapon stash and tier two are so plentiful with them that you're gonna have way too many manglers on top of all this before you actually exfil there are ways you can extract what you've upgraded your weapon so if you pack a punched it if you've added rarity to it there is a little bit of an easter egg that allows you to extract what you've equipped on your weapon not one to one it is a little bit 
RNG and random what you get on the northwest side or the top left of the island in the high threat zone next to the doghouse there's like a little bit of a flagpole a little bit of a smoke coming out there's like a little bit of a grave site you walk up with the weapon you interact with it pay respect and then it'll basically strip down your weapon and spit back some RNG sometimes it'll just give you a photo sometimes it'll give you pack a punch sometimes it'll give you the tool sometimes it'll give you a combination of those and, and this is a great thing to do if you're pretty comfortable with the tier three where this location is that you can get in and out safely uh, on your way to exfil because it gives you a pack a punch crystal that's a great opportunity when you start the next match to basically start off with pack a punch on the weapon that you already want one of the most important challenges when i was going for my grind was the 100 kills and x filling for the vast majority of weapons this did not track properly it seems like they figured it out and it works pretty good every new gun i've done from mw2 seems to track no issues but when i did it it was bugged. If it is still bugged for some weapons, I'm not sure exactly which ones they would be, but I think they're working on it. As long as you use a base version of the gun, not a blueprint, you should be pretty good. If it does not track, the thing that I had to do to make them track is I went in with my insured slot. I did not pack a punch. I did not upgrade the rarity. I didn't equip any attachments. I got my 100 kills ish plus, making sure I only shot body shots because I wasn't sure if crits were counting. And then I X filled and then it counted. So if all else fails, nothing works, I would try that method, but I think they got it kind of under control at the moment. And one little quick side note is that the game doesn't really break down damage. If you have a common weapon, essentially you can count that as a one X damage. If you pack a punch it, it will double that damage. If you pack a bunch it again, it will times two that. If you pack a punch it again, it will times two that, which gives you a total of eight times damage with the pack a punch. With the rarity, they've modified it slightly than they had in Cold War. If you go up to the green rarity, you get 50% more damage, which is a 1.5x. Blue is two, purple is three, and gold is four. And I know that's a lot of information, but it also increases the damage with different ammo mods and Deadshot Daiquiri for crit shots. It doesn't really, we don't have a hard number, but in Cold War that multiplied it by two. So you ended up getting like 64x for the absolute best weapon with a headshot or crit shot. So go ahead and try that for yourself. Hopefully these things help you out. Feel free to comment if I missed anything. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.